I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Thank you for joining us. And we start with some breaking news tonight. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has agreed to plead guilty to violating the Espionage Act, ending a court case that has lasted nearly six years. He is set to plead guilty to one charge of conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information. A short while ago, WikiLeaks said on X, formerly Twitter, that Assange left a British prison on Monday and flew out of the United Kingdom. They released this video footage showing the founder boarding a flight at London Stansted Airport at 5 p.m. local time. The guilty plea, which is set to be finalized on Wednesday, will resolve Mr. Assange's outstanding legal matters with the U.S. government. Now, as part of the deal, Assange will not spend any time in custody because he will receive credit for the approximately five years he has spent in a British prison fighting extradition to the U.S. Assange was charged with conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information. For years, the U.S. has argued that the WikiLeaks files, which disclose information about the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, endangered lives. Assange founded WikiLeaks in 2006. The organization claims to have published more than 10 million documents in what the U.S. government later described as one of the largest compromises of classified information in the history of the United States. He and his lawyers have long claimed that the case against him is politically motivated. All right, for more on this case, we have our North America correspondent, Nomia Iqbal, with us here in studio. Nomia, you're following this. Tell us more about this agreement. Well, it's interesting because although he has been in jail in the, the UK since 2019, the, the actual story of Julian Assange has been running for, for more than a decade, hasn't it? So his, uh, his WikiLeaks website rose to prominence in 2010. You mentioned there this uh, breach that the Americans said was the largest kind largest of its kind in U.S. military history. Uh, WikiLeaks released more than 90,000 classified U.S. military documents on uh, Afghanistan war, then also released more than 400,000 secret documents on the Iraq war. And he's long been accused of putting American operatives' lives at risk. Um, as you mentioned, that almost all the charges that he faced um, were under this Espionage Act. Um, and he won't spend any time in the U.S. Uh, once he enters this uh, this plea, which uh, is expected to be finalised later this week, because it's roughly equivalent to the amount of time that he has spent in the U.K. fighting extradition to the U.S. As you said, this has been running for such a long time, if we're not talking just specifically about the court case. How significant is this agreement? I think it's a big, big moment, um, you know, especially for Julian Assange's advocates. He has, uh, you know, a lot of allies who believe that he was just doing a, a job of a journalist uh, by releasing uh, all these documents. They believe he uh, is a figurehead for free speech. I think that was slightly complicated back in 2016, if you remember, when WikiLeaks released large volumes of emails from the Democratic National Party, sorry, Democratic National Committee, and also from a personal account of John Podesta, who was then the um, uh, presidential campaign leader for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and many Democrats had accused him of collaborating with the Russians, which he denied. Um, but uh, it is a big moment. Uh, and it does put, I think, this saga to an end. The Biden administration has been under pressure by the Australians, which is a, they're a key ally for the Americans, a key security ally to end this legal limbo. And it looks like that is going to happen now this week. OK, take us through what happens next, because we understand there will be a hearing in the Mariana Islands. Why and, and what's going to happen? It is it is a bit of a twist, isn't it? It's an exotic venue, so it's expected to be finalised um, on Wednesday at the U.S. District Court in the Northern Mariana Islands. It's a U.S. territory in the South Pacific. It's around about 2,000 miles from Australia. And I think, first of all, that's convenient, because the, the Department of Justice has said they expect him to return back to his home in Australia. But also, looking at the DOJ letter, um, they've also pretty much implied that that's what he wants to do, that he does not want to voluntarily return to the continental US. And I think that's because, you know, he harbors this deep mistrust of the, the US government. And he has long spoken about that. At one point, he and his allies accused the US of allegedly trying to kill him with a drone, which the US obviously denied. So I think that's that's why, you know, that particular venue has been chosen. And the Department of Justice has said that they anticipate that he will appear in, in, in the court there on Wednesday. 